as a leader, you are the main stakeholder in your life and stakeholders are decision makers. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing four things that will help you build the confidence and boldness that you need to start building the life that you want to live and making your own decisions. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this was in the last two videos that I have uploaded here on my channel, thank you so much for all the love and I'm so glad that it has been helpful. In those videos, I was talking about the hard decisions that you need to make towards building the life that you want. But one thing that I have realized is a lot of us actually struggle with having the confidence and the boldness to actually make these decisions for ourselves. Oftentimes as women, we feel like our decisions are being made for us, whether it's been through law, tradition, culture, our families. It feels like we are doing things to please other people and doing things the way other people want us to do them. And one thing that I have realized in my life that has given me freedom is I have a lot of confidence to make decisions for myself. One thing about me, I'm kind of known as a rebel, but I will do what I want to do. Now, hear me out here. I am not encouraging anybody to be rebellious or to be a lone ranger. But what I am encouraging you to do, sis, is be a leader. And as a leader, you are the main stakeholder in your life. And stakeholders are decision makers. As an entrepreneur, as somebody who has multiple companies, one thing I know is that when you have that position of director, when you're the one with the majority shares, okay, you're the one who calls the shots. And one thing I've realized about our lives is that we really do need to call the shots. We are the ones with the choice here. Now, as a Christian, as a person who, you know, has faith and is spiritual, one thing that I know is that I have laid down my choices in exchange for God's choices, or more simply put, I allow God to really guide the decisions that I make. But at the bottom line of it all, I'm the one who is still making the decisions. I'm the one who can choose to rebel. I'm the one who can choose to do whatever it is that I want to do, or I'm the one who chooses to walk God's way. But at the end of the day, it is my choice. And when it comes down to making choice, when it comes down to making decisions, it really does require a lot of confidence because on the more human side, on the more sympathetic side of things, Oftentimes, it's hard to make decisions because we are scared. We're scared of the outcome. We're scared of failure. We're scared we'll make the wrong choice. And so I wanted to come and share four things that have really helped me kind of garner up the boldness and the confidence to be able to make decisions for myself in order to be a more independent woman, in order to feel more confident in my decision-making skills. And I really hope that these four things will help you. And if the lighting keeps changing, it's because I live in London and it looks like it's about to pour down with rain even though it's spring. So there's that. So the first thing is overcoming group thinking. And the reason why I wanted to put this first is because you are watching me here on social media on this lovely YouTube screen. Please make sure that you have subscribed if you have not. But social media comes with a lot of different opinions. But with that, it also comes with echo chambers. There are different groups who, which exist online and offline, which think a certain way about certain things to do with life, whether it be relationships or the way you should approach your femininity or the way that you should be productive or how you should approach your health. There are so many different groups and echo chambers telling you how to think and being a part of groups and belonging in groups is a huge part of our desire as human beings. We want to belong, we want to have a group of people who we learn from and rely on. But one thing that I have realised is if you want to have boldness to make your own decisions, you have to have the courage and the mindset to challenge what the majority of people are saying and challenge what the majority of people are thinking. Now that challenging doesn't necessarily mean that you will always disagree, but it does mean that you critically think about the things that you are being told to believe and the approaches you're being told to have about life. Critical thought is something that a lot of us don't have, not because we're not smart, but oftentimes we just trust what people tell us. We watch the news and we believe the narratives we are being fed. We believe what our parents tell us. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but I think one thing about 
about confidence and boldness is being able to discern and being able to look at something that you're being told and apply some critical thinking to it to really decide if you agree. I think if a lot of us deconstructed or questioned why we believe certain things which we believe about relationships, health, productivity, we would start to realize that actually a lot of these things are just handed down to us. It's just what the majority of people say and we kind of just believe it. But if we were more investigative, if we try to maybe ask questions about these things and try to challenge the way the majority of people think, we may come to the conclusion that maybe we don't actually fully agree or maybe we're somewhere in the middle or maybe we actually completely disagree and we refute what people are trying to make us think or we can actually decide no I actually agree but we know that we are agreeing with our full minds and our full selves and we know what we are agreeing to just make sure that the things that you are subscribing to and not just YouTube channels but the mindsets and the thought processes and the theories that you are subscribing to are actually things which you've looked into and fully agree with and make sure that you have thought critically about whether you agree with some of the things you're being fed or are you just agreeing because you think you have to or it's because it's the way that everybody else has done things you have to be willing to sometimes go against the grain and say let me actually figure out whether I agree with this whether it's in line with my personal views whether it's in line with the way I want to live my life and sometimes you'll find that the way the group thinks isn't actually the most beneficial to you especially when it comes to the online space if you're not careful you start to believe narratives and this is why I started that series on my channel called the lies and deception series where I was talking about the lies and deceptions of certain you know content genres that we all know and love here on YouTube just to make sure that we don't get fed certain things into our subconscious that make us believe things which may not necessarily be true or just may not be the most helpful for us as women moving forward into the futures we actually want and I know there may be this sense of pressure that we have to agree with what the group thinks we have to think like how everybody else thinks because to be a rebel comes with social consequences but sometimes that's the cross you have to bear in the pursuit of the life that you want and be assured that there are so many different groups out there if you disagree with the way a lot of people are thinking go and find your people as long as it's not you know harmful and dangerous but really do an inspection of what you believe and why is it just because the majority of people People think this way and act this way or is it because you actually want to think this way and act this way and if you feel as though actually there's a misalignment here that the way you behave and the things you believe in actually don't align with the future that you want for yourself don't be afraid to challenge yourself and challenge the thoughts of everyone else around you does it mean that sometimes you'll lose friends or sometimes you'll rough, you know, rub people the wrong way? Yes, but that's the discomfort that comes with advancing towards the future. I'm sorry to tell you, that's the reality of life. If you're gonna go against the grain, there's gonna be a bit of friction. And that brings me to point number two. You need to overcome your desire to please everybody. Now, don't get me wrong, you need people in your life. You need people in your life who love you, like you, who wanna do life with you. But that doesn't mean you have to be this generic person who completely puts aside their uniqueness, their mind and their beliefs in order to, you know, be amicable and pleasing to everybody's palate. The truth of the matter is this, not everyone needs to like you. You don't need to be liked by everybody. One thing we constantly talk about on the podcast is sometimes some people are going to see you as a villain and that isn't always because you've done something bad. Sometimes it's just because you're not called to journey in life with them. There are so many people who hate what I do here on the internet. There are so many people who I'm not their cup of tea. And you know what? That's okay because I found my tribe. I have found my sisterhood. I have found my community. Now we can definitely respectfully disagree. And I think one thing that we also need to overcome is desiring for people to want and like all of us. You can actually like some of me and you might not like other parts of me, but that's fine. You don't have to fully accept all of me you can choose to compartmentalize your interactions with me and you know like what I say here and not like what I say there that's completely fine and I think as individuals we also have to become comfortable with the fact that not everybody is going to like every part of us but that doesn't mean that we have to hate each other because everybody has 
differences and you need to be okay to have differences with other people to be able to say maybe we just don't see eye to eye on this but I hope that you'll be able to you know support me and not wish ill for me but I'm still going to pursue what it is I said I was going to pursue especially when you realize that you are the one in the driver's seat of your life you don't want to give that control over to somebody else who is just as fickle and just as um fallible as you are right in all humility sometimes we're choosing to please people but people's opinion can constantly change can always change one day they like you then another day for the exact same thing they won't like you and so when you kind of divest your self-value from other people's opinion of you you start to grow a confidence that says you know what the only person that I have to please in my life me Courtney is God myself and the people who I love most and I know who love me everybody else is it's great if they're on board and if they're not it's it's all right <laughs> the next thing that I think really helps boost confidence and boldness to make your own decisions is learning to trust your judgment one thing that I think knocks our confidence most is when we make a decision and it doesn't go well right or when we have got a track record of maybe not making the right decisions or not doing the things that we said we would do but one thing I will say is every day is another opportunity to make a better choice and to choose to do something different I know it sounds very cliche but honestly and truly you need to give your judgment a chance and if you feel as though well I can't trust my judgment the best thing that you can do is equip yourself with knowledge in in any area of your life which you're trying to build up whether it be your finances whether it be your education your relationships your faith your whatever your anything to do with your future you're going to make better judgments and better decisions when you are equipped with knowledge read the books listen to the podcast have the conversations with the experts make yourself as knowledgeable as you can so that you can make informed decisions and informed decisions require information you need to become someone who acquires information everybody who i know including myself who has started to live the life that they want often started off not knowing a, what they wanted and b how to actually make it happen but what they endeavored to do was make sure they equipped themselves with information and knowledge which allowed them to pursue this thing with good judgment by making well-informed decisions calculated decisions and very strategic steps but you can't have calculations you can't have strategies you can't make informed decisions without information and without data and so as you try to construct the future that you actually want gather the information watch the youtube videos read the books literally sis you need to stop saying well i don't know how to do this get to know get to know how do your google searches read the blogs whatever it is you need to do co read comments read other people's stories dm people if you need to and say hey i am stuck i don't know how to do xyz and get the information you need you're going to be able to trust your judgment more when you know you are equipped with the right information and a good amount of information to make calculated decisions. But let's keep it real, success in life is not guaranteed. And this brings me to my fourth and final point. You need to be ready to deal with the consequences of the decisions that you do make. Like I said, this video isn't about making you a lone ranger or making you extremely rebellious. But one thing I mentioned is going against the grain sometimes comes with friction. And sometimes that friction means you do get burnt and you do end up sometimes making the wrong decision or going down the wrong path. And sometimes that costs you time, money, energy. I have made my fair share of mistakes in life. And maybe I'll do a video sharing the mistakes that I've made because I feel like not enough people talk about it. Also, it has gotten so dark and gloomy. Oh. But sometimes you do actually make decisions which aren't in the best interest of your future or actually extend your journey time when you didn't expect it to. And so one thing you need to do as a woman who's trying to be the leader of their life is realize that leaders take the brunt 
of the resistance. They take the brunt of the consequences of their actions. If there is failure, it is on the leader to take responsibility. And honestly, I think if you're trying to become the woman that you want to be, you have to take responsibility for your actions, for your choices, and for the outcomes. Now, this doesn't mean you are entirely to blame or you should see yourself as some kind of catastrophic failure. That is not true. But one thing that I have realized is you're the one who's going to have to deal with the consequences of your actions as well as the victory. Like I said at the beginning of this video, key stakeholders are the main decision makers, but any director or CEO of a company who holds the majority of stakes lets you know when things are up, they're the one who cash out the most. But when things are down, they're the ones who lose the most. And so you have to be willing to take the good with the bad. As the leader of your life, you're going to have to take the brunt of the consequences that come with making decisions which don't always work out. Now, this doesn't mean you have to deal with consequences alone. Make sure you've surrounded yourself with people who will give you grace to be like, you know what, you failed then, but we still believe in you. We still believe that you can pursue the future you want and so let's you know revise the information and the data we gathered that led to us maybe making a miscalculation about this thing or let's look at the factors that went into this decision failing maybe it wasn't entirely your fault but you also need to have an assessment for yourself that says I need to do some re-evaluation here and I need to devise a new strategy and that's all on you this is a big step right if you're going to have the confidence and boldness to make your own decisions you also have to know that when you make those decisions for yourself you're going to feel the big hit of them if they fail but also Hopefully you are surrounded by people who will be able to not only lift you up and say, you know what, you fell down seven times, but get up eight. You'll also be able to give yourself the grace enough to say, I can go through all these steps again and make new decisions because every day is a new opportunity to show up and do something differently. So I hope that this video was actually helpful. I feel like I needed it <laughs> as much as I hope that you guys did, but let me know if there are any other videos you would want to see from me that I like this I feel like the clouds are working against me today so I'm gonna go off but I really really hope that you guys liked this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and also drop a comment keep it respectful share with me your thoughts is there anything in particular you have struggled with when it comes to being confident enough to make your own decisions in life? And also, what are the things that you think hold you back from making the bold decisions that you need to make? Is it fear? Is it self-doubt? What is it? Or if you are somebody who has taken radical steps to pursue the life that you want, how did that go for you? <laughs> so drop a comment like it's hot and I will talk to you very, very soon. As always, stay beautiful and stay blessed. Mwah.